Hello everyone, welcome to Learn and Earn. Today we are going to talk about how we can connect our data which is in Google Sheets with our Data Studio dashboards. How to link them correctly. So let's begin. So to, to get your data, right, in this case I am going to go to my drive.google.com where my dummy data one is present. I'm going to double click this. It will open my data. So I have taken some sample columns here. Okay. This is a stock based data. I have just downloaded it from a website. So we have date in this, we have stock name, we have at the, the price at which we bought the stock, the quantity bought, the current price of the stock, invested amount, total revenue, profit and loss and industry type of that particular stock. Now I have this particular data. Okay. And I have this data till 2187 row. Now I want to, now I want to see on a daily basis, right? I don't want to open this Google sheet every time and I want to connect this Google sheet to my data studio dashboard. So can I, uh, so that I can, I can watch all the progress in the data studio itself, not on the Google sheets. So in this case, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to type data studio. Okay, then we will go to datastudio.google.com. I'll click this. It will open me like this. Okay, so in this case, I can either I can click on blank report or I can click on create. So I'll just click on blank report. Now, Data Studio does not know what is the back end of this particular data, uh, dashboard, right? So it will ask me to add data to report. Now we have different types of APIs. There are multiple types of APIs through which we can connect this data studio dashboard. Now, for example, we have Google Analytics, we have Google Sheets, Google Ads, BigQuery, App Sheet, File Upload and whatnot, right? So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about Google Sheets because my data is in this Google Sheet um, dummy data one. I'm going to click on this particular API. Now it is asking me, you have, you have informed me about the the type of the API, right? Which is Google sheet. Now, now this particular da da dashboard requires the URL or the name, something like that. So that this particular da um, data studio can be linked to that dummy data. So you can go and click on URL, come to this particular data, copy this URL, go to this particular page, click on URL and then paste the link here. As soon as you paste the link here, the data studio itself gets all the tabs in this sheet, dummy data and sheet two. As you can see, we have dummy data and sheet two here. Now my, I know my final data is in dummy data. I'll click this and I will, I will take, take mark these two options. Use first row as header, include hidden and filtered data cells. So, so there, there's an option for optional range as well. So for example, in this particular data, I know that my data will not increase from this particular row, right? It will not increase beyond 2187. So there is one more option. I can go and inform data studio, go to my range will be A1 till and what is the column? Column is I, I 2187. Okay. I'll go here and we'll do like this. 2187 a1 colon i2187 or there is one more option you can just delete the number after i so it will take everything of um, like everything from a1 till column i bottom okay so you can do this i have for now i am just removing this i'm just clicking on add so this this particular action will link your dummy data your data right this particular google sheet data with a da data studio dashboard and by default it will give you a table like it will automatically tries to understand the data and will present you some some sort of uh, dimensions and metrics and give you something like this so normally this is not useful for us so we can delete this and we can start using our data studio dashboards so next topics will come in next videos I hope this video is useful for you. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Welcome to Learn and Earn. Today we are going to talk about Data Studio dashboards 
and particularly very important element in the dashboard which is known as tables so this is a sample dashboard which we are going to make at the end of our course right so for example i want to create a table like this in which i i have industry column with it and against that industry i also have profit and loss related to that industry so as you remember in my episode 1 i have explained you how we can connect data studio dashboard with google sheet data right so this was our data uh, this was our data right in google sheets and i've made a dashboard in the data studio like this so if i if i go and select any other industry so it will change data accordingly for that particular industry right so we are going to make this type of dashboard and we are also going to improve the quality of our dashboards and we'll learn what all important things are there so before before uh, before doing that right we we must first understand what are tables and what all options do we have in tables in the data studio dashboard so let's begin so this is my blank data studio dashboard in which i have already linked by backend data of the google sheet now i want to insert a table right so we have a section here insert i'll click on insert i'll go to insert uh, table i'll click this and i'll click again on the page as soon as i click it it will give me some data right which i can change according to my requirement for example i in this particular dashboard i have industry and i have profit and loss and i want to show i want to show the profit and loss of all the industries in that table right so the the main important driving uh, you can say sections in the table on the right hand side is setup so we have two sections here one is setup and one is style style is basically um, used for the formatting part formatting of this particular part if you want to do conditional formatting in, or any other type of changes in font color and all style is used and setup is basically how my table will look so basically how many columns will be there what are the metrics should be there and all everything so let's start uh, working on it so as you can see there there is data written here right so under this we have all the columns present which are in our backend from date to industry everything everything is present here right so we have a pool of all the columns on the on this section and we have a setup section where we have dimensions and metrics so in in a table right in a table in data studio dimension means columns or you can say a text that we want to show to our viewer so in this case i want to show industry so i'll go to industry i'll drag and drop the industry over stock name so that stock name disappears so as soon as i drag and drop the industry here the table uh, uh, adjusts itself right so we can see all the industry here only and only industry and not the stock name and we have a record count here and record count is coming from this section so a table is basically uh, made of two things one the attributes and the second is the metrics so this is the attribute okay and this is a uh, metrics part now i want i know i want profit and loss uh, column in here right so by default record uh, record count was there i can remove that particular part and i'll just go here and i'll pick the profit and loss and will replace it now i know that i have industry and i also have a profit and loss state, uh, column here now so so basically in this particular section in setup we know that dimension uh, dimension gives you the text part or the attribute part of the table and metrics give you the number the numericals part now if i go down right we have another option that is a rows per page so i want to show only few rows in a page so for example in this case we only have four right so i'll just go and i'll just try five or i just try one so this will only show one uh, row so this is it sector right so if i go and select 10 it will show me 10 1 4 slash 4 so the to total number of industry in my back end is 4 that's why it is showing only 4 now i also want uh, if if i also want a summary 
uh, in this table which is very uh, which is very important when we provide a table a tabular form of uh, data so i will go and click on show summary it will sum up everything whether it is minus plus what not it will sum up everything and it will give give me a data grand total here right similarly if if i want to sort the data right now now see we have industry here as a column and a profit and loss in the sort section you can see there are there is it is already by default selected right so you want to sort sort by industry or you want to sort by profit and loss so obviously when when we are giving data in a table form usually the table is formatted as per the metric so i'll go and try to sort by profit and loss okay and that too in descending or is ascending order for example so i can get the least value here okay and the biggest value down so it is in the in this fashion see it will change itself as you change the option here now we have secondary option for example if i will also have a separate column a different column altogether for example i have a revenue okay so for revenue i will i have to bring the revenue here first as soon as revenue comes here i also get an option for revenue here total revenue okay i'll click on this and i'll click by descending so it will basically sort with the uh, with the two conditions one is profit and loss ascending and second total revenue with descending order okay now we also have default date range so this particular this particular section will be discussed in further videos so uh, if i if i talk about tables so if if i talk about tables we have talked about the attributes part we have talked about the metrics how we can bring the metrics in the table right then how, number of number of rows in a particular table we can populate then how to get a summary of that particular table how to sort that uh, that table and columns everything now we also have a filter here right this filter is basically it's nothing it's nothing it's a it's a simple filter as we as we apply in excel or google sheets so for example if i click on this filter right it will give me an option so for example i only want it sector okay it sector just just in case right so i will i will include this select a field field will be industry okay i know that it industry is equals to industry equals to and i'll for example in this case i'll just write down consumer consumer products right which is written here consumer products i'll save it so if i apply this filter i will only get consumer products filter right so we have a we have a filter option also in tables right so this is a basic layout of a table where we can we can change the attributes we can change the metrics we can sort them we can have a grand total we we can also have a filter applied as per our conditions now for example i have created this table and i want to you can say i want to style it right i want to style it i'll go to style section and i'll first the the first common thing which we also do in microsoft excel or google sheets is that we apply conditional formatting so i want any number which is less than 0 should be highlighted as red so it will be a single color that is red okay format rules will be select field okay now i want to highlight the color in profit and loss statement i'll click profit and loss select a condition which is less than equals to 0 okay go down entire row instead of entire row i'll just go with profit and loss i'll select the color and i'll save it anything which is less than 0 will be highlighted as red similarly i can add another rule here i can go to profit and loss greater than or equal to 0 for example i'll take profit and loss and i'll give it as green okay so if there is green if, if there is value which is greater than 0 it will turn as green same we can do in total revenue as well so this is a very important part and it can change the entire layout right the look and feel of the table and it will highlight your data points which you want to show 
after that we also have uh, wrap text in as we also have show header so if i if i remove this the headers will be removed okay and for example if the length of this text is very high right so i can wrap text so basically it's very less that's why it's not coming so we can wrap the text as well right now now if i talk about the font size we can change 14 to 18 for example the header font has been changed the style can also be changed right okay now we have table colors if i want to change this green gray color from gray to yellow and if i want to highlight these rows in blue for example alternate rows in blue right so i'll just do this so so you can you can choose any type of color you can you can you can make your table as you want right we have an option to change the font we have two option to change the color everything else so if i go down i can also change the text uh, font um, of the table as well i'll just increase it to 18 for example so it is more visible here i'll just increase the size of the table right the font can also be increased similarly the the font also we have an option to change the font as well right so if i talk about table table body row numbers if you don't want the column here you can untick this if you want you can take this wrap text is for wrapping all the text in the table horizontal scrolling is for the scrolling part right and then i come to table footer show show pagination so basically this section will be removed see this part you so basically this is very helpful in the table because we know how many data how much more data is present in the table and we can we can accordingly um, switch to different pages right we want so if i want the compactness i click i can click the compactness and so basically this is this is basically um, this missing data and all this is pretty you can say advanced stuff so this is this is all about basic stuff of a table here we can style we can do conditional formatting we can change the color we can change the font we can have grand total we can show the pagination and extra etc so as 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 moving forward so for example if i talk about dimensions right we were having dimensions here this section dimension so this style is talking about these dimensions so if i go to this dimension section uh, dimension section right and i want everything to be right side so it will take to right side i want it in middle i can click on this on the left i can click on this similarly for each column right we have this option so you can go and you can just change the alignment of the text then we have background color we have th these are basically pretty uh, you can say advanced stuff for look at, look and feel but it's not related to directly to table right and if i want to so, so see the my table is looking like this like so there's there's no border and everything so i can click on this part i'll go to style and if i want to change the border one minute yeah add border shadow and also okay yeah so basically see this table is now looking as a separate entity in the data studio dashboard earlier it was only uh, giving me data right so this is more you can say this is more prominent that it will look more prominent in your data studio dashboard now we we have we have seen we have seen different as aspect of tables where we know we we can change the attributes we can change the metrics then we can change the number of rows what we how much rows we want to see then we can also untick and take the um, the the summary row here right we can sort the data for any column in the metric section secondary sort is also present here this particular section is for uh, advanced uh, advanced users we can leave it as it is now if i talk about filter i can also add a filter here if i talk about styling of a table we have different option here we can apply conditional formatting multiple conditional formatting in different columns we can show uh, headers we can wrap the text we can we can color the particular uh, rows in the table as as we required right we can change the font as well and there are multiple options here so like for example alignment and all so this is this is all for data studio dashboard tables i hope you like this video
प्लीज लेट मी नो द फीडबैक इन द कमेंट सेक्शन थैंक यू वेरी मच हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हाउ वी कैन क्रिएट बार चार्ट्स और यू कैन से कॉलम चार्ट्स इन डेटा स्टूडियो सो इन दिस केस आई हैव ऑलरेडी कनेक्टेड माय डेटा सोर्स यू कैन सी डमी डेटा वन ओके विद माय डेटा स्टूडियो सो टू क्रिएट अ कॉलम चार्ट और बार चार्ट आई एम गोइंग टू क्लिक ऑन इंसर्ट देन आई एम गोइंग टू क्लिक ऑन कॉलम चार्ट अगेन आई एम गोइंग टू क्लिक ऑन द पेज इट विल गिव मी अ प्री पॉपुलेटेड चार्ट है राइट सो वी ऑल नो दैट दिस कॉलम चार्ट और बार चार्ट इज मेड ऑफ टू एक्सेस वन इज एक्स एक्सेस एंड द सेकेंड वन इज वाई एक्सेस यूजली ऑन द वाई एक्सेस वी हैव ऑल द मेट्रिक्स द नंबर्स एंड ऑन द एक्स एक्सेस वी हैव द टेक्सट और यू कैन सी द एट्रीब्यूट सो इन दिस केस इन दिस केस आई वॉन्ट इंडस्ट्री टू बी ऑन माई एक्स एक्सेस राइट सो आई कैन सी इन द डायमेंशन सेक्शन Dimension section uh, basically is the x-axis and the metric section is the y-axis, right? So I want I want to change stock name to industry. I there are two options. Either I can click this and drag and drop over this, or I can click on this section. It will give me the columns, and I can just type it here, industry. So see the stock name has has been changed to industries, right? So consumer products, constructions, IT sector, automotive. this i have done now the second part is the matrix i can see that this is a record count that means that means this particular chart is giving me the count of the entries of consumer products construction and it sector so instead of record count i require for example i want a uh, stock price bought at okay so i'll just hover that particular matrix over here right this is this will give me the sum so just keep in mind whenever you pick any um, any metric here right we must understand first that whether that metric is relevant to the ch chart or not so for example if in this case if i if i say i have picked stock price bought at at the industry level but this does this does not make sense right because to uh, to to view to view i should get a average stock price like what is the average stock price of my consumer products but what is happening here is it is giving me the sum so that is why it is coming 1.5 million so if there is any scenario where you have to change the, uh, the the pattern how this particular metric should be added up right we can go on edit button here and we can get an average so this will give me the average amount so average is now approximately 2000 right so we have multiple options here the count the district count minimum maximum so basically there could be two things right like for example i want the maximum uh, stock price and then i want again stock price bought at and that i want in minimum so what is the minimum cost of the stock i have bought in this particular uh, sector and what is the maximum stock price i got i bought right so the, these are the scenarios which could come in your uh, bar chart so how we are going to deal it first of all before taking up the metrics we should understand what exactly this metric mean to this particular variable okay so now in this case i i bought uh, i'm going to change it to average okay and the second thing i'm going to do is i want uh, profit and loss as well so profit and loss i will just drag and drop so okay what happened here is okay so so you can you can you can see in my dummy data right in profit and loss right we have negative values as well okay so the negative values are summed up and if if any in any case like for example in this case it is coming like this that means there are negative values as well so this shows that we should not we should not show our matrix these two matrix in one chart right so instead of uh, profit and loss i can take the total revenue as well okay now i got the total revenue total revenue is this and the stock price bought at is this so this is my this is my bar chart now the most important thing the bar chart should look tidy right it should not be random so in this case for example i want to sort this bar chart with the help of uh, you can say total revenue so it will give me total revenue like this or if i want to sort it by price it will give me like this right similarly we have different options here 
so the second number of option which is very important and which is very useful in bar chart for example there is an industry or there is uh, there is some parameter which you want to filter out from this bar chart you will go and click on add filter you will go and click create a filter name your filter okay name anything now you want to exclude it or you want to include it you can mention it here and then you can mention the attribute name for example industry i want to exclude industry which is equal to uh, you can say it or i will say contains it okay i'll just save it so this will remove it sector from you see only the three sectors are visible so you can customize your bar chart like this you can have all the x axis y axis you have you can have multiple bars under each uh, attribute in x axis okay so this is the overall structuring of a bar chart now let's come to the style part this this makes sure that your bar chart looks good right to the viewer so there we have uh, two options here either it is horizontal or it is vertical okay so this is horizontal you can just adjust the bar chart like this okay and we have vertical as well vertical bar chart options now if want if you want the data labels to to be shown you can just click on this part show data labels if you want stag if your data is like that you can click on stag if you want compact numbers it will give you compact numbers now if you want the precision like for example if it is not compact and it is 0.8 right and i want zero precision so you can do like this so see one Nine five five. It is showing, and if I do like this, one nine five four point eight. So you can adjust the. Uh, you can see the decimal number on the uh, data labels as well. Now, if I want to change the color, you can go here. This part, I'll just click on yellow. This I'll click on this color. It will change accordingly. Let's have a dark, little darker. Okay. So you can change this. Just click it again. go to style so basically this is this is how you can change the colors of the bars as well and uh, the precision the data labels which is very important in a bar chart right let's go down we also have a reference line for example you have a you have a scenario where you want uh, what is the average passing percentage or what is the average stock price right so i'll just click on this okay i know that this this is the average stock price right and i want I want to make sure that my my stock price bought at price should not be more than one point five k, and if it is, we should know with the help of reference line, right? So I cl I clicked on this reference line. This is a constant value, okay? And value should be, for example, one five one five zero zero. See, we can get a reference line here, right? So this this can be. move accordingly as you like like this one 1800 okay this is very useful when you want to show the comparison whether it is above or below right any bar any um, any level is above or below with your reference or it could be anything so you can also change uh, the axis as well right so the basic the basic basic thing in a bar chart is the x axis y axis bars reference lines data labels colors of the bar distance of the bar okay these are the basic uh, parameters here if i go down um, so this is show label so this is the label on this particular line right you can just remove this so that it's more tidy if i talk about uh, single or double basically we have two options here i uh, what type of axis you want you want single bar you want double bar so these are basically more advanced features right which we can talk about in later uh, stages so if i want to talk about more basic ones we can go and have this right and left uh, x axis shown okay stock price bought at and this as well one minute okay it is coming like um, coming here total revenue okay cool so we have uh, we we had x axis we had y axis we came down and we also have some options to color color them uh, also right the grid lines 
the the text what what it should be written right like this and we can also move uh, our legends left to right bottom on the right hand side anywhere we want accordingly we have an option for background and uh, background color and watercolor as well you can try this so usually it is gray in, like in executive summaries and all usually we keep it very like it should be blue or gray most of the time but it is your choice you have, you have lots of options here to to change the colors to change what like what, a lot of parameters here right so if you want to add the border as well you can click on the border just click on style go down and click on the border it will give you the border so these are the basic parameters which we have so just let let's have a recap this uh, this uh, you can say this basically this is x axis this is y axis this is the sorting of the bars this is the date range if applied right in a uh, in a data studio dashboard this is the filter what what type of filter we can apply on a, a column chart if i talk about styles we have different options we can change the pattern we can change the style of the bar chart then we have show data labels option we have options to color the bars then we have option to put a reference line in it then we have option to show the x axis y axis the name of the axis as well and also we also have the options to color and change of, uh, to color the um, background and to change the font as well so these are the basic parameters which you can you can modify while creating a bar chart in data studio i hope you liked my video thank you very much hello everyone welcome to my channel today we are going to talk about how we can create combo charts in data studio and how to separate the vertical axis and create secondary axis in the chart so i have already connected my backend data source with my this uh, dashboard i'll go to insert the first step will be go to insert click on combo chart again click it on the page it will give you some data like this and as you can see we only have primary axis here and the x axis here so on the x axis x axis i will just bring the industry instead of stock name i'll just bring the industry here so that data is so visible okay now i have i have two section in here one is dimension one is metric as we have changed industry the all the industries have come up here on the x axis that means the dimension is the x axis now if i talk about y axis this right we have metrics in it stock price bought and i'll just take another as well the current price i'll just drag and drop the metric here so as you can see there are two charts in one uh, view right one is bar chart and one is the line chart so that means these these numbers are coming from the metric section there are two charts in here and there are two metrics also right so if i go to style i can i will be able to separate these uh, this primary sec, uh, primary axis to secondary as well i'll go to style i'll show you so we have bar and line so we have series 1 and series 2 so any any changes in bar that will be done in this section series 1 and any changes related to line that will be under series 2 right so if i want data labels on the series 1 i'll get like this so i have selected line here right i can change this to bar as well it is it is to totally your choice if i talk about series 2 I have line. I can change it to line as well, and I can change it to bar as well. So it's totally depending depending on your requirement whether you want two lines in the graph or you want bar and line. Now the point, the main critical point here is how I can separate the axes. So we have an axis section in both the series. In series one also we have axis, right? And in series two also we have axis. So as you can see, it is selected left, and there is nothing selected here. So if I click on right. it will take the secondary axis to the right for series 2 so this is how we can separate the main primary axis into two primary and secondary and we have x axis all the rest rest other options in this particular section they are very similar to column chart that i have explained in my previous video you can refer if you want to go in detail you can refer my column chart video as well 
apart from that everything is same in this we just wanted to convert the primary into two axis one is primary and secondary and we want two combination of charts if like for example if you want one more chart right so there there is there is an option to add another um, column as well or another chart as well so if i talk about profit and loss it will give me one more bar right so because profit and loss have negative values that's why it is coming like this it is minus 2 billion showing here if i remove this it will go so you can you can create multiple options here right multiple you have multiple options here you can create multiple type of charts here and you can create uh, double uh, axis as well so this is how you create du uh, dual combo chart in data studio i hope you liked my video please comment me any topic you want on data studio so that i can create that content and i will be helpful for you thank you very much hello everyone welcome to my channel i hope you liked my previous videos today we are going to talk about pie charts how to create pie charts in data studio as we know pie chart is a circular disk format in which we try to present the share of the attributes in percentages or in values as we can see on our screens that in this pie chart consumer products have 92.6 percentage of share and if i talk about construction it is 4.6 if i talk about it sector it is 2.3 and in automobiles it is 0.5 today we are going to replicate this chart and see what all features and options are present in data studio so to create the pie chart we have to go to the insert on the top click on pie chart click it again on the sheet it will give you some data here now as you can see there is stock name here right so if i want to replicate this this particular pie chart is based on industry type so instead of stock name i i'm going to put industry here i'll just search industry on the top right i'll just drag and drop the industry over the stock stock name here it is we have stocks uh, we have the uh, industry types here now we have metrics in here so instead of metrics i want revenue i just want to see the revenue share i will just search revenue i'll just drop drag and drop the total revenue over the record count once i have the revenue here now see the my data is populating here as of now we have the industry types as well as well as the revenue percentage we can see that the percentage is also matching now the point is which type of pie chart you like this one or this one obviously we have borders in here we have different colors so we will try to format format this pie chart as per this so for so for the, the first thing if i talk about color coding right so we have to go to the style section in here i'll click on style as i can see we have number of slices option in here how many slices do you want for example there are 20 there are 20 industry types so i'll just go and click on 20 just make sure for example if any column like for example in industry if it has 20 types of industries and you are you have selected 6 it will only show the top 6 okay so make sure that what is the unique count of uh, of that particular column so in this case i only have four industries so that's why i'm selecting four it is as it is now we have option of color type what type of color i want in some people like single color like this the shades of one particular color okay and the second is slice it will give different type of colors and i also can change the color so if i want it to to to, to convert into gray this particular portion i've clicked on it it will turn to gray see this is now gray i if i want to convert it into blue i can just click on the blue section and i can change the colors accordingly according to my requirement so it is little bit slow i have already selected blue color here so i believe it will come yeah it has so finally i have selected the color everything everything is fine but i want this particular index right this was the, uh, the list of um, you can say the list of industries to be at the bottom so we'll just go to style we'll go downstairs and we'll just go to the bottom we have an option to adjust like this see we have different options here how to convert 
how to uh, how to manage the uh, labels basically right i just uh, brought them at the bottom now i also want uh, i also want the border right the shadow as well so if i talk about border and shadow you can go at the bottom you will see add borders okay now if i have borders i already have the borders okay correct cool so i want the black line as well at the borders right i'll just click it again i'll go to style and where it was written add borders i'll just try to uh, i just try to uh, try some steps here i'll just click it on this portion okay so basically the background and border is is basically changed by these filters so we have the black border as well in this now we have all the legends at the bottom we have the color coding with us now i want to change this background color to gray i'll just click it again go to style i'll just come here and i'll just see whether i can change the background okay background i'll just click on this i'll just change to this okay cool i have i've changed the color i'll just it's pretty dark i'll just change it again i'll just go to style i'll just go here i'll just lighter it down cool okay so now we have this now the the last step in pie chart i want this hole right this donut shape in pie so i'll just click it again i'll go to style and i'll just slide this slider like this okay so basically this this decides what will be the diameter of this particular circle it will give you a donut type of chart and as we can see that we have replicated we have replicated the pie chart so there are multiple options in here i have i have walked you through the basic most basic ones where we can change the color background border the styling of the border we have the percentages now one more thing like for example if i want instead of percentages i want values normal values right i'll go to label if i want to change the label i'll go to this percentage section i'll go on and collect the uh, select the value see the value has been changed so you can also have none there will be nothing in here if you want percentages you can have percentages if you want labels you can have the labels as well and if you want the value you can select the value so you you can you can style your pie chart with the help of this style section in here and for setups we discussed that that the type of column you wanted to want to select you can select from here and the type of metric you want to if you want to show on the pie chart so i hope you like this video this is all about pie chart thank you very much hello everyone welcome to my channel today we are going to talk about how to do data blending in data studio so for this i have two data set with me data set 1 and data set 2 let's just go through the data set once before creating the blend right so in data set 1 i have country name i have country code i have a total participation from this country total gold total silver and total bronze they have one so this is an olympics data basically right so we have country we have code we have total participation and we have the gold silver and bronze count and in our second data set we have countries and we have people accompanying participants so for example in afghanistan total number of participants was 15 and if i talk about people accompanying them they were 5 so basically my responsibility is to combine these two data and provide a graph where i can show how many people came from this country for the participation versus how many people came for accompanying them right so basically so that i can get a gist like in which country the people are coming like the accompanying people are coming more than the participants this is my target right so this is my data 1 this is my data data 2 now let's go to the data data studio dashboard and let's create a data blend for this part this is my dashboard okay so before uh, before doing anything right we have to we have to add the data source in this 
either I can go and click on data data or I can go here manage added data sources. For example, in this case, I'm going to click manage added data sources. It will give me an option to add a data source. I'll click on it. I'll click on Google Sheets. I'll go to data set one as it's already showing me. Otherwise, you can also click the URL and then you can paste the URL of the data source. So in this case, I'll select data set one and I'll select add. It will take some time. Okay. And okay. Now we have got our data set one in this. Okay. So this is the country name. We have country name column here. And instead of record count, I will drag the total participation. I have the numbers here. Now, my second step is how I can create one more column here in which I can get this column from the other data source, right? The people accompanying the participants. Currently in the data studio dashboard, we have total participation and countries. So for this, I'm going to add another data in this. Okay. I'll click this. I'll click on Google sheets. I'll click on data set. Two, you can also put the URL of the Google Sheet and proceed. In this case, I'm going to select data set two and add it again. So this basically this step will add data data set two in the data studio memory. Now what I have to do is I know that that data has been added now, right? Data set two and data set one. We can see the data sources as of now. Now how to blend on the right hand side below the data source, we have, we have an option to blend data, right? I'll go and click on it. And if you are seeing something on in this particular page, right? For example, in this page, I am seeing table one data set one. That means this table is ready to be merged with another table. How to merge with the another table? I'm going to click this option, join another table. I'll click it. And it will give me the data sources available in the memory of this data studio. So in this case, added data sources, we added from the resource section, right? So I'll click on data set two because data set one is already present. I'll click on data set two. Perfect. So I have, I have data set two. I have data set one and there is a configuration going on in between them. Okay. And I can see that in both the tables, right? In both the tables, we have countries and countries at the top. So basically this is the joining key of this configuration. So with the help of this dimension, with the help of column countries, this data studio will understand the data and will map it accordingly. So the second column, which I, which I required was people accompanying participants. I'll click on it and drag it to the metric section. Cool. So my 80% work is done, but a very important step that has to be taken care of when we are moving forward. So I'm going to click on this edit button, configure join. Okay. So in this video, we are going to talk about left outer. So whenever you are merging data, whenever you are joining two data sources, so there are five configurations that you can have. First is left outer. In this video, we are going to talk about left outer and in my upcoming videos, I'm going to talk about other sections as well. So left outer means the, the base, the basic mapping will be done as per the left data. Left data means I'll just uh, save this. Okay. I'll just click save left data means this table. So try when you, whenever you are joining two tables, try to keep the maximum data, right? That the table which contains maximum data on the left hand side. So for example, in table one, the total number of countries are 200 and in table two, the total number of, number of countries are 50. And I know that these 50 countries are already present in table one. So in that case, table one should be on the left because it contains maximum number of countries here so that the mapping can be done accurately. Right. So that's why we are taking table one here and then table two this side. After doing this step, I'm going to click on save. 
and it will give me the dimensions like this so i can i just delete i'll just again drag and drop here people accompanying the participants we have successfully created first data blend in which i needed country as well as i needed total participants and after that i needed people accompanying those participants right so if i want to check the data i will go and add the summary row here okay the so total is 3430 for total participants i'll go and check in my data source total participants total is 3430 it is correct and if i talk about people accompanying participants it is 1778 i'll go to the data set 2 i will just check the total 1778 so that means i have imported complete data from both the data sources in this blended table and once we get this table we can convert this into whatever graphs i want i'll just convert it like this or like this yeah so i can get the ratio as well so for example in france 53 is accompanying 53 participants in great britain total participants were 53 and total people accompanying the participants were 5 so we can get a ratio according so this is an example you can create table you can create charts that is your choice but this is how we do a left outer join and blend the data in data studio dashboard I hope you understood my video. If you have any doubts, please write them in the comments so that I can clear them out. I hope you like my video. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about how we can create dashboards in Data Studio. This is a sample dashboard that I have created from this data source. pollution data 2015 to 2020 i have taken this data from internet it would be useful in our dashboard so let's begin we are going to replicate this dashboard in this video so let's go to data studio type data studio and then you can go to data studio.google.com I'll click on it. Okay. Now I know my URL of the sheet, right? Google Sheet. I'll just copy that URL and then again go to this. Click on plus button. Okay. Now go to Google Sheets because my data is in Google Sheets. I'll click on Google Sheets. then these are the these are the ways through which we can connect to our source so in this case i know the url directly so do so i'll just click on url section and just paste the url here it will automatically fetch the tab name tab name and columns everything so our tab name is data set okay and we will tick this use first row as headers yes i want the first row to be header okay then hidden and filter cells also i'll just tick that and we will just click on add this action will connect my backend data to this dashboard and after that we can create our dashboards it will take some time totally depend depends on how much data is present at your backend source right so you have to be patient when you are connecting the source so i'll just delete this it's an auto populated table okay now i'll just rename the dashboard as pollution data 2015 to 2020 okay cool so let's go to the data once so that we know that what type of columns are present in the data so we have we have first column we have city we have date we have p m 2.5 and we can see then in some cells it is blank and in some cells we have data similarly we have p m 
NO, NO2, NOx, NH3, CO, SO2, O3, and so on. So these these columns are basically the pollutant names, okay. And with the help of these pollutants, there is an there is a column known as AQI. We can see that we have AQI numbers here in this. Some are blank and some in some cells we have data. And as per the AQI, the bucketing has also been done, which is poor, very poor, severe, moderate, and accordingly. So we have in total we have sixteen columns with us. right and with the help of these 16 columns we are going to get insights and i'll show you how to create a dashboard which can create a story for the user and user can understand what's going on live in live data right so as we know that this particular data is divided or you can say is segmented as per the dates so that is for sure that in the, in the dashboard we should give an option to the user to select the dates so that user can select the dates like for example month over month if they need to compare month over month data quarterly data or yearly data so it would be really uh, useful if the user has the date with them so let's go to the dashboard once again cool so this this dashboard i'm going to create now and this one is the one which we are going to replicate Okay, so the first thing we have to create this rectangular bar and the text. So I'll go back. Okay, now I'll go to this text section. Okay, I'll just zoom a little bit. Okay, so I'll just click on text, and I'll just drag it like this, and release the mouse. Cool. I'll just write something like data. You can see pollution data, two thousand fifteen from two thousand twenty twenty. Bold it, and on the right hand side we have some options to format this thing. So I'll just click on center. It will come to center. I want to increase the text. It will increase the text like this. Okay. Now, now basically I want to I want to give a color to this, a blue color. to the background i'll go to the section background and border i'll click on this i'll click on blue okay now the text is black so it's not looking very good so i want text to be white i'll click on the text i'll go up we have font and paragraph here font color i'll click on this i'll click on white color and here it is i'll just adjust adjust it little more cool so this is so basically this is the main title of our dashboard so this is a constant thing okay it basically gives a very good look and feel to your dashboard always when whenever you are trying to create a dashboard right make sure that you give ample space to different sections so whenever you are creating dashboard given the first thing after this title right the first thing you should Uh, leave space for the filters and the controls so for example i'm going to put a date filter in here exactly like this select date range okay so i'll go to my dashboard i'll click on add a control okay then i'll go bottom and we have date range control here i'll click on it and then again you just have to click it and it will drop the object there like this you can just re reshape it again and then we will format it little bit i'll go to style and if you want the text to increase you can select from here okay i'll just keep it as 14 now i want to change the color to yellow background and border i'll click on this i'll go and select this okay i got a yellow color for this filter okay so this is basically a date filter i'll click on this so you can see that we can we can apply a start date and we can apply end date in this now the second thing after this i want a rectangular bar in which aqi trend is written and after that i have three graphs in here i'll go back to my dashboard i'll just adjust this little bit okay now again i'll go go to text 
and i'll leave a space here some okay now i'll just write a q y trend bold it and you can just color it with some bright color so that it's visible okay i'll just center line this and then i'll just increase the size little bit cool i have a qi trend now so now now i know that this particular section right this particular section will be only left for the filters or scorecards and after this a qi trend my graphs and everything will come now in my dashboard right i have q and q quarter and quarter and mm so before like before creating these titles i'll go and create this graphs first okay so i want an year on year graph i'll go back to my dashboard i want an year on year graph of aqi so that we can uh, present the trend right so i'll go and click on insert i'll click on table first instead of graph i am going to click on table so why we are going why we are doing this so for example if like for example if the, your data or just in case the calculations are not correct so you would know instantly if you are working on a table and then you convert the table into a graph so what all columns i require i need i need um, i need a date like basically a, a year axis and i want an average of the aqis okay cool i'll come here i have city and record count okay so i have to change these two columns i'll go to dimension i'll click here and i'll click on date okay so this has been converted into this will convert into dates now see we have the dates now in the metrics i want instead of record count i'll want aqi so i'll just we also can drag and drop here directly and whenever we'll drag and drop any metric right it will try to sum it up if it is a number so you can see the aqi here it is showing 1740 so instead of sum i want an average because it's a basically it's a ratio right so i'm just averaging it out for this dashboard i'll click on average here cool so basically when uh, whenever you are pulling any metrics in metric section right we have a different option here you can get maximum number you can get minimum number you can get dix, um, dis, distinct count you can get total number of count you can get sum so in this case i want average so i have selected average it will directly average out everything cool so i have date i have aqi no problem but point is i want instead of dates i want year right so i want to convert this date into year format so how to do that so we have two date section here one is the date range which is linked to this okay and one is dimension date which is linked to this column so we have to convert the format the type of this metric so i'll go to this edit button i'll go to type click on this go to date and time and convert to year the first step is done now the second step the dimension one again go to this section click on type date click on date and time and then click on year so as you can see that this particular complete date column has been converted to year but in the background like in the data source we don't have any year column as of now the best part about this is we don't have to create a separate column we can just convert the formats right i just converted it i i got the year column as well as i got the aqi the average aqi now i want to convert this table into a graph a visual representation so i'll go and click on this down arrow then i can convert with with the help of these options i can convert it into different types of graphs so in this i want a line graph so i'll click on this for example cool i got the line graph so i can see that in 2015 the aqi was if i hover it it was 2000 uh, it was 212 and in 2020 it is 113 which is not true but yeah our data source was taken from internet so it is not very reliable but yeah for the sake of 
creating a dashboard, I've uh, taken this data, right? So we have data with us. And in this, the first trend we have created is year on year AQI, average AQI trend. Now it's not very, you can say it's not very prompting. It's, it's not giving me the numbers right, right away. So I click on this particular graph. I'll go and click on style. Then we have show points option here. It will give me the points over here. Then I'll click on show data labels. It will give me the data labels. So I know in 2015, it was 212, 197, 181, and so on, and 2020. So as you can see, we have created a line graph for year on year comparison of AQI. We also have a black border in this. So I'll just go and select this and I'll go into style section and we'll have border color. Click on this, it'll give you a color here. Okay, just adjust the graph now. Cool. Now my year on year graph is created. I'll just create, I'll just write it like this. Okay. Click on this. And I'll just change the color of change the color of the text to white, bring it in center, just to increase the size. Cool. Now we have created year on year graph successfully. I'll just create a month or you can say a quarter over quarter trend. So this quarter on quarter trend will be a little different than uh, the normal one, right? So what we are going to do, I'll just, I just, I just did control C and control V and I created a copy of this graph because I've already done all the formatting. So I don't want to create every graph from scratch and then do all the formatting. So now what I have to do is we have, we have this, um, year uh, access in this, right? So I want to convert this year to quarter on quarter. So I'll go to this dimension, click on edit button, click on year, date and time, and then click on quarter. Okay. So this will convert the year on year data into quarter on quarter data, right? So what this particular graph means, this is basically the average of AQI in each quarter, right? So from 2015 to 2020, the Q1 average to the uh, Q1 average of 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 is 145. Similarly, for Q2 average of all the years is 83 and then 72 and accordingly, right? So I'll, so we have created, we have created quarter on quarter data now. Right. I'll just copy this control C again, control V it will create a copy. And then I want month over month trend here. Okay. And I'll just copy this also. It will be month over month. Cool. I'll just click it again. And I want to change this quarter to month. I'll go to this dimension date section, edit, click on quarter, click on date and time, and then click on month. So it will give me an average of AQI among all the months. So I know that from 2015 to 2020, the average of AQI in January was 168. And similarly, we have date. So we have created three graphs now. And this also we have created year on year, quarter on quarter, month over month like this. Okay. Cool. So as you can see that sheet is finished now. So I want to increase the length of the page. So I'll click on the page anywhere. 
I'll click on right click then I'll click on current page settings click on style and in the height just mention 1200 as you can see the page has been extended okay again click on this cool we have created these three graphs we have created the date range filter okay now now the next part is I want to create API bucket filter and then a bar graph which have city in the axis and the AQI okay so I'll just go here what I can do is I'll just copy this and control C control V I'll just drag it down with the help of the down arrow and I'll just write this what is this top five pollutants city wise so I'll just write top five city wise I'll just adjust it cool now what we are talking about we are we are, we, we want to give a filter of AQI bucket okay so I'll just create add a control drop down list click it here and instead of date just put AQI bucket and then you can just color it from the background section okay and click on I'll click right button on the mouse go to current page settings go to style I'll just increase it to 2500 it will increase okay now I want a bar graph right in which I want city and AQI cool so I'll go here I'll, I'll say insert table okay and instead of instead of AQI bucketing here I'll put city and then I'll put AQI okay it's already there I'll just change it to average and then change this table to a bar graph okay so we have more um, cities in here right so as of now only 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 is 10 cities are showing here so I'll go to style and if I want to increase the number of bars right I'll change in style section I'll change this number and just make it maximum like for example 100 it will give you 100 right you can just increase the numbers as as it is okay now now I have a bar graph in which I have city name and AQI average now I want to give the data labels so I'll go and click on this under style section click on show data labels and just click on compact just increase a bit and here it is so in this graph also we can see we have AQI bucket we have the graph and here also we have done the same now I'll just just to just to make it more you can see uh, more presentable right I'll just go and select the border add border shadow under style okay and I'll just color the border color as well cool so we have created this now the next graph is the pollutants graph and a filter of city I'll just click this filter select this filter control C control V bring it down and instead of AQI bucket put city okay cool now we have a graph here with pollutants right 
so i'll go and copy this control c control v bring it down now the next thing is if i see in this graph i have city but i have pollutants column in here right the, the data is related to pollutants so instead of a q i i'm going to drag and drop all the pollutants in this list so first i'm going to bring p m 2.5 convert it to average then p m 10 convert it to average then co same you have to convert everything into average nh3 no2 nox so2 toluene xylene and so on so i've created the graph but as you can see that the graph has lots of data in it right so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to i'm i'll, I'll try to create a graph in which majority of the data can be accumulated within a single bar so that type of that type of chart is known as tagged one so i'll click on this bar chart i'll click on this down arrow and then select this stacked column chart so it will replace all the bars into one bar and it will give a portion of it like in delhi what is a portion like what is the average of pm 2.5 it is 80 for pm 10 it is 157 for nh3 this nh3 it is 34 and so on so this is more a readable graph right but we are not going to read it as is right with all the cities and uh, considering together so how to read the how to read the dashboard we are going to learn so before like after creating all the charts and all right the very important step we have to do is select this and press control button then select all the graphs which are related to dashboard like this select this all the filters should be selected all the graphs should be selected and then on any object like for example in this table or this filter click on the right button of your mouse and click on group this action will group all the elements together and whenever you will change the date range right complete data will start changing so if i talk about this graph like this dashboard as you can see that we have date range, we have year on year, quarter on quarter, month over month, we have AQI bucket, we have city options, we have pollutants options as well. So, so let's become the user now and let's start to view the dashboard, right? So click on this view section, view button here. I'll click on this and now it is in view mode. So as a user, right, for example, I am in pollution control board and I'm the head of the pollution control board and I received a report from my subordinate. This is the report from 2015 to 2020. Now let's, let's go into this and check the insights that we can pull out. So in, like I'm not, I'm not uh, applying date range first. I'm just reviewing it, right? Reviewing the graph. So if I talk about year or year, we have seen there is a decline of the AQI, okay, as per this data. So the AQI was 212 in 2015 and in 2020 it is 113, which is a good uh, indication, right? The AQI has been increasing. Now, as a, as, a, as, a, as a head, I want to know in which quarters, exactly in which quarters we have maximum AQI. So as we can see that in Q1 and in Q4, we, we particularly have more than average AQI right and if i talk about month over month we can see that in october november december and january we have higher aqis so from these three graphs i i i got the, i got a point okay i got a point on which we have to work we have to first identify why in these three in these four months right the aqi was increasing 
what was the reason okay so this trend we know that these are the four months where the average is going above right the average is increase the aqi is increasing okay so i got a, the first point to work upon is there are four months from 2015 to 2020 these four months have been very constant in which aqi has been increasing cool okay now we'll go down and i want to know i want to know in which cities the severity was very bad like for example i want to select the aqi severity as severe i will select very poor and i'll select poor i want those cities okay i want those cities in which the aqi was very bad severe very poor and poor i'll select this and i have a list of cities here so let's talk about so let's talk about first four cities first so if i if i am the head of the department right i want to i want to focus on top 5 top 4 top 3 cities so that i can act upon them and the aqi could be reduced in future so i know that in ahmedabad it is the highest 520 then patna then delhi and then gurugram these are the top 4 okay i got to know that ahmedabad is the key uh, basically contributor in maximum aqi so i'll go and select ahmedabad here and i'll select only so that i can i can get to know the list of pollutants in ahmedabad which are maximum in number so if i talk about the pollutants pm10 which is this color it is 123 in average and then it is 2.5 okay so so with the help of this dashboard after doing two levels of deep dive we come to a conclusion that yes in ahmedabad in entire country like in entire india we have ahmedabad as a city which have maximum contribution to aqi and in ahmedabad particularly in ahmedabad we have pm10 and pm2.5 pollutants maximum and which are very hazardous to human beings so i know that in india in ahmedabad i have to work on these two pollutants so the next deep dive if i have data for that for example i have a list uh, for example uh, i have a list where i know that what are the causes what are the root causes of the increase of these pollutants and then i'll this i'll i'll submit this report to my upper management that this is these are the key pollutants which are increasing in ahmedabad delhi patna and gurgaon and we have to focus on this point so for example just in just in case uh, if i talk about co right carbon monoxide whenever you drive you you drive a vehicle right diesel petrol whatever it contributes to co majority of it so i know that i have to talk to rto the transport department so that they can work on they can they can work on policies so that they can reduce the emission and they can reduce the co so this is how this is how everything is related and interlinked in a dashboard never ever create a dashboard which does not say a story to the user never ever create a dashboard which do not shows trends or year on year quarter on quarter or month or month of trends to the user so that because these these points are very important for the user right so that we know that what is the problem area in which particular time period the problem occurs what type of problem in which city it is occurring the most and what is the cause or you can say the the, the type of pollutants in this case what are the maximum type of pollutants that that are present in that atmosphere and what are the main root cause of that pollutants to increase so this is how a story is built and around that story dashboards are made so this is a very basic dashboard that i have created and you can you can just create if you if you want you can just create you can just try it out once so if i talk about 2017 january 1st and 
2020 December 31st I'll just click it apply and complete data will change and for that particular time period all the numbers will change everything will change and the user will get to know what's happening right so it is very important to create a story I hope you liked my video this is a pretty lengthy video but yes with the help of this video you will be able to create dashboards on your own and if you have any doubts in this particular video please comment in my next video I am going to teach you how to blend data together and how to use case and when statements in data studio thanks for watching bye bye